Welcome to A Course in Miracles with the Ho'oponopono Lens. We're going to cover uh, what is the last judgment and lesson 311. I judge all things as I would have them be. Okay, what is the last judgment? Christ's second coming gives the Son of God this gift to hear the voice for God proclaim that what was false is false and what is true has never changed. In this world of duality, it seems like there's an inversion that the false is true and the true is false. The fake is real and the real is fake. Um, but let's move on. And then if you have any comments about that, let me know. And this, the judgment is in which perception ends. That's a not a confusing sentence. That's a clunky sentence for me. So let me read that again. And this, the judgment, is in which perception ends. At first, you see a world that has accepted this as true, projected from a now corrected mind. And with this holy sight, perception gives a silent blessing and then disappears. Its goal accomplished and its mission mission done. The final judgment on the world contains no condemnation, for it sees the world as totally forgiven, without sin, and wholly purposeless, without a cause, and now without a function in Christ's sight. It merely slips away to nothingness. There it was born, and there it ends as well. And all the figures in the dream in which the world began go with it. Bodies now are useless and will therefore fade away because the child of God is limitless. Yes, we are limitless. And we can tune into that right now. We don't have to wait for the last judgment. Um, and I was doing that earlier this week going outside without um, a sweater and normally it would be sweater temperature and that is very subjective because some people who grew up in the snow thinks California weather is like always sun and hot and everything so that's very subjective but I'm trying to get my body used to doing a little bit of things that are outside of the comfort zone a little bit. You who believe that God's last judgment would condemn the world to hell along with you, accept this holy truth, this truth right here. God's judgment is the gift of the correction he bestowed on all your errors, freeing you from them and all the effects they ever seem to have. To fear God's saving grace is but to fear complete release from suffering, return to peace, security and happiness, and union with your own identity. So, um, we're not going to fear God's saving grace, but we are going to return to peace, security and happiness, and union with our own identity with a capital I. God's final judgment is is as merciful as every step in his appointed plan to bless his child and call his child to return to the eternal peace the child shares with him. Be not afraid of love, for it alone can heal all sorrow, wipe away all tears, and gently waken from his dream of pain the son whom God acknowledges as his. Be not afraid of this. Salvation asks you, give it welcome. And the world awaits your glad acceptance, which will set it free. This is God's final judgment. You are still my holy son, my holy child, forever innocent, forever loving, and forever loved, as limitless as your creator, and completely changeless and forever pure. Therefore, awaken and return to me. I am your father and you are my child. And so 
that is exactly how it is. And that was a lot. So we're his son, forever innocent, forever loving, and forever loved. And there's a scripture that says nothing can separate us from the love of God. He is our creator and we are as limited as him. We are changeless. This love that we have is changeless because he's changeless. And this love is for forever pure. We're forever pure because his love is in us. Okay, so that is it for the final judgment. And I love that judgment. Um, I'm not sure why there's fire and brimstone <laughs> and uh, how some people interpret that, but I love this interpretation. Okay, so we're on lesson 311. And it says, I judge all things as I would have them be. Judgment was made to be a weapon used against the truth. It separates what is, it separate what it is being used against and sets it off as if it were a thing apart. And then it makes of it what you would have it be. It judges what it cannot understand because it cannot see totality and therefore judges falsely. We want to have righteous judgment. Um, there was a time when I would judge someone as being stupid. And um, the Holy Spirit prompted me one day and told me, if you continue to judge this way, this person might suffer from dementia. Not that I am claiming to be all powerful, but I do have power, especially what's in my wheelhouse, so to speak. So for instance, if I call someone stupid, they will reflect that back to me as making not the wisest choices, but that would be what they're reflecting back to me. Someone else might say, oh, this is the smartest person in the world, and they're going to get a different version of the person, even though it's the same person. Going back to the text, let us not use it today, but make a gift of it to him who has a different use for it. He will relieve us of the agony of all the judgments we have made against ourselves. And I'm going to include in others because we are one in the sonship. Uh, he will relieve us of all the agony of all the judgments we have made against ourselves and reestablish peace of mind by giving us God's judgment of his son. Father, we wait with you with open mind today to hear your judgment of the son you love. We do not know him and we cannot judge. And so we let your love decide what he, whom you created as your son, must be. And I kind of disagree with the sentence, we do not know him and we cannot judge because number one, we're one. And number two, all of us is created in the image and likeness of God. And when God sees us, he judges us. He judges us righteously. He says, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. He's seeing us. He's judging us as healthy beautiful, vibrant, uh, intelligent, perfect, kind, abundant, so on and so forth. That is God's judgment of all of us. If we're having a problem judging righteously, we can do ho'oponopono. To divinity, we could say, I'm sorry for seeing this person as not the wisest person in the, God's going to say, the crayon box, not the sharpest crayon in the crayon box. Um, forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. 
I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm hearing something. Um, I'm going to make a note of it. Um, I need to reply with this note that I was hearing from the Holy Spirit. Um, let's see. You can also do Ho'oponopono if the four phrases are too much. So say you're in this person's presence and you're really triggered. Uh, say they didn't make a wise decision. You can say to divinity, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes I am on fire like that. Um, or to divinity, you can say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And for me, that's a pattern interrupt. So you're not going to keep speaking or judging uh, the person as you used to judge them, but you're going to stop that old pattern and you're going to start judging righteously. And that's what Ho'oponopono does. We get to a place of zero where we're inspired to hear the voice of divinity and to take inspired action, speak words that are inspired, do things that are inspired, so on and so forth. Okay, that is it for today. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at in the world or evening because you might just be where it's nighttime. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.